Hey folks, James Abrinio coming to you from Abrinio Law, your Northern Virginia personal injury and criminal defense law firm. In this video, I want to give you a couple tips on how to assert your Fifth Amendment and Sixth Amendment rights. That's your Fifth Amendment right to remain silent and your Sixth Amendment right to uh, ask for an attorney here in Virginia. And this is important because I see a lot of cases in my own cases and reported cases in the news uh, and nationally where individuals will be being investigated by law enforcement and they'll attempt to assert their rights, but they don't do it right. And then ultimately when a court reviews it, uh, they'll say that it wasn't effective. So a couple tips when thinking about asserting your Fifth Amendment right. Number one, uh, you don't have to be a jerk when you're doing this, to be clear. Um, you can calmly, uh, thoughtfully, uh, and but, but strongly assert your rights to remain silent, assert your rights to have an attorney. Um, it doesn't require you to yell an officer or be disrespectful for an officer. In fact, the more calm you are, the more direct you are, and, and the more thoughtful you are, I think the more effective the approach is and the less likely it is that all of a sudden law enforcement is going to try to then um, uh, get you in a situation where you find yourself faced with other charges and things like that. Um, so uh, my, my number one rule would be it, know your rights, but be calm, uh, be straightforward, be direct. Number two, when you're asserting your Fifth Amendment right to remain silent, remember that you can just say that. But after you assert your Fifth Amendment right, you don't then have to volunteer, nor you should volunteer additional information. So when you're saying, your officer, I'm, I, I'm asserting my Fifth Amendment right, I know my rights, I, I don't want to have any discussion with you further, I want my attorney and my Sixth Amendment right, um, and I have nothing further to say if you're going to arrest me, arrest me. Um, if you then later on start volunteering information, let's say you're being transported to uh, the adult detention center and all of a sudden you decide that you're going to try to talk your way out of the arrest, well... Uh, by you volunteering information, uh, you're risking court essentially saying that if you end up giving more information, incriminating statements, um, because law enforcement didn't interrogate you, they didn't question you, they didn't ask you questions that were likely to result in, in uh, culpable statements, well, then those statements very well may come into evidence. They may be very well used against you. So remember, anything that you say can and may be used against you and if you're not properly asserting your Fifth Amendment and Sixth Amendment rights, they may very well be used against you in court. And that's the last thing you want to do. So the next thing is, is assert your right to an attorney clearly and directly. Don't ask, um, you know, do I need an attorney? Should I get an attorney? Maybe I should talk to an attorney. Be very direct. Um, I have nothing else to say at this point. I'm asserting my Fifth Amendment right to remain silent. And I'm asserting my Sixth Amendment right to an attorney. I don't want to be questioned. I don't want to be interrogated. I want an attorney present so I can be advised of what I should and shouldn't answer. And until then, I have nothing else to say to you. That's going to be the most direct way to do it. Obviously, different language can be used, but um, I think you should get my point. Now, the reason this matters is there's actually a lot of case law dealing with whether or not somebody actually asserted their Sixth Amendment right to counsel. Uh, there's most famously a case, I think it's out of uh, Ohio, um, where somebody used the colloquial term, I want a lawyer dog, um, essentially saying, you know, I want a lawyer um, to ask for an attorney. And a judge literally found that the individual was meaning they actually wanted a dog that was a lawyer. Um, so somehow they, um, that analysis ended up allowing statements being made after I want a lawyer dog to then be used against that person because they had not clearly established their request for an attorney. So the more clarity, the better, the more you can build on that record, meaning with law enforcement that you want an attorney, uh, the, the easier it is for me if, let's say, a statement after the fact is made um, that I can then use to say, Your Honor, um, he was questioned uh, against the Sixth Amendment right uh, without an attorney. Um, he was questioned against the Fifth Amendment right, a Miranda violation, and therefore that statement shouldn't come in. Um, or um, even more effectively, law enforcement understands your request for law enforcement. They understand your Fifth Amendment request to remain silent, and therefore they comply with it, and there's no statements to be worried about after the fact. Okay, now, um, individuals a lot of times will ask me, well, James, uh, uh, I was arrested. 
uh, I was never read my Miranda rights, so it all should come in. Uh, I mean, all the statements I made shouldn't be admissible and, you know, the case should be dismissed and all those kinds of things. I want to be clear about Miranda. and Let's talk about that really specifically. Miranda only applies the Fifth Amendment Miranda rights to your right for warnings of uh, your right to remain silent and your right to counsel. That only applies if you're arrested. And that's really defined as a functional equivalent of arrest. Uh, the term is no objective person would feel reasonable to leave. Um, there, there are thresholds there, but I can tell you under Virginia law, it's got to be effectively an arrest. Somebody's got to have gun your gun to you or under literally have you uh, um, in the squad car with, with uh, um, uh, 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 handcuffs around you. Um, essentially, literally something everybody would agree is an arrest because if there's any wiggle room there, the court is going to try to say it's not an arrest. Um, for Miranda to apply, you've got to essentially be under arrest and you have to be interrogated. Again, that goes back to the first point is don't volunteer information. So for me to use Miranda to get statements that were made in violation of Miranda thrown out in court, um, if you volunteer information or if you're not actually under arrest, uh, Miranda won't apply. And again, unfortunately, I believe the courts are going to go out of the way to do what they can to keep statements in. So you got to be very careful about that. Again, that's when going back, you want to be clear about your assertion, Fifth Amendment right to remain silent, assertion of a right to counsel, uh, and that you have nothing to say uh, until uh, you have that opportunity. Now, um, people are worried, well, does this make may seem like I'm lawyering up? Am I going to hurt myself by asserting these rights later on? Well, look, I, I get what you're saying. Maybe uh, in, in some scenarios, law enforcement's going to cut you a break because you've been more forthcoming with them. All I can tell you is in my experience, when people try to be open with law enforcement, it ends up hurting their case. So as a rule of thumb for me, not knowing anything about your case, my general rule of thumb is, is uh, less information to law enforcement, the better. Um, yes, you have to give identification information, um, but you're not required to make statements about allegations against you. You're not required to give them consent to search your vehicle or your house. You're not required to give them consent to search your uh, phone. Uh, and in fact, before you do any of this, you should be talking to a lawyer. Uh, and that's whether or not you're being arrested or not being arrested to be investigated. So hopefully uh, my point comes ac uh, across pretty clearly. But if you have any questions, make sure to reach out to an attorney. You can always give us a call, phone number 703-570-4180. Or give uh, us an email, james at abreniolaw.com, or check out our website, www.abreniolaw.com. Look, I, I hope uh, you never really need this information, but it's something that you should be aware of. Uh, so, in case you ever do need it, um, it comes in handy. So, I wish you the best of luck and look forward uh, to, to you watching more of our informational videos. Till then, take care. Bye.